Hi, good evening. This is Dr. Ashok Kumar. I'm a consultant orthopedic surgeon and American board certified in regenerative medicine from American Academy of Regenerative Medicine. I welcome all the delegates from different countries who are attending this webinar, which is Global Regenerative Medicine Summit 2020 and also the speakers. The idea of this summit is to bring the specialist with evidence-based knowledge and to give information, not just for the practitioner, even for the general public in a simplified way without any commercial interest to help the society. So today we will be starting with the first presentation. I will be talking about the role of a stem cell in osteoarthritis of the knee. So I'm Dr. Ashok Kumar and I'm working at uh, my doctor specialist medical center, which is my main practice. I also work in Saudi German hospital and Dubai Healthcare City. So I am basically a joint replacement surgeon doing hip and knee replacement, arthroscopic surgeries and ligament reconstruction. And over the last seven, eight years, I am practicing regenerative medicine. And today I will be presenting decoding mesenchymal stem cell in osteoarthritis of the knee. So before we start this presentation, I will just talk briefly what's happening in regenerative medicine. So actually what happened, there is a certain set of patients who, actually, who don't really need surgery or who are in the middle somewhere where the physiotherapy, the painkiller are not working and you inject them with hyaluronic acid or you give some other supportive treatment and they again come back to you with the same problem. So I think in those patients, regenerative medicine help because regenerative medicine is a branch which is developing, it's evolving and it's harness the power of your own cells and tissue to regenerate, replace and repair damaged, injured tissues. It was the Kaplan who in 1969 first gave the, this beautiful cells he described about mesenchymal stem cell because he believed that it was dry from the mesenchymal tissue and it was able to divide and increase its number. And it was also possible that this cell could convert into other cell type like bone, cartilage, tendon, and ligaments. Over the next few decades, the mesenchymal stem cell was extensively used and I should say misused also. And this led to the problem of characterization. Like what are the actual cell which we can say that these are mesenchymal stem cell. International Society for the Cellular Therapy, they, came, they took this issue and they came up with some guidelines and they said that the mesenchymal stem cell are not the stem cells, they are stromal cells. Stromal cells are actually the supporting connective tissue cells, which are present in most of our organs and tissues in our human body. So they changed the term from mesenchymal stem cell to mesenchymal stromal cells. Then they also gave guidelines that you can label a cell as mesenchymal stem cell if they are able to show the plastic adherence in the standard culture medium 
using the tissue culture flask, more than 95% of them should be positive for certain marker like CD73, 90, and 105. And this should also be negative for CD45, CD34. Outside the body, they should be able to differentiate into other cell type like osteoblast, adipocyte, and chondrocytes. In 2017, the Kaplan revisited the initial concept of mesenchymal stem cell. He agreed with the guideline that it's not a stem cell because stem cell should show serial transplantation and it should be a show doubling by cell renewal. But he was not happy with the concept that MSCs are actually dry from stromal cells like the connective tissue. And he gave it another term which is called medicinal signaling cell, which means he he proposed that as we know the stem cell, they act by releasing certain growth factors and cytokines which promote healing at the site of the injury. So he proposed medicinal signaling cells. But if we see the literature, still we see all different kind of terminology used for stem cell like mesenchymal stem cell, mesenchymal stromal cell, medicinal signaling cells, or just the stem cells. We also look in, looked into this uh, characterization of the cell and uh, we published this paper recently in archive of bone and joint surgery. And uh, I think that these cells should be called as maintenance stem cells because they cannot be, they may not be just confined to the mesodermal tissue. And outside the body in the lab, they show that they are stem cell because they are able to increase their number by self renewal and they are able to convert into other cell like the bone, cartilage and the fat. And some of these cells when they're implanted inside the body, they do the same inside the body. Although the evidence is little, but it has been shown. So they are basically maintaining and promoting healing environment. That's why they should be called maintenance stem cell. If you see the basic pathology of osteoarthritis, there are three component which establish the problem or the pathology in osteoarthritis. Initial role or the central role is by innate immunity, which involve the cells like macrophages, mast cells, and natural killer cells. And then come the acquired immunity, which is B cells and T cells, which establish it as a chronic debilitating joints and synovial pathology. So basically there is an imbalance of anabolic and catabolic environment in osteoarthritis. Catabolism is more and it's mainly mediated by interleukin-1 and alpha tumor necrotic factors contributed by metalloprotopeptidosis, which break down the matrix cartilage and lead to the matrix degradation and osteoarthritis of the knee. This is the abstract and uh, it will be fully available in next because of the COVID. There is some delay. Now in this paper, because if anybody wants to know about the stem cell and if you read the literature or the books, you find that then the information about the stem cell is not like a comprehensive or concise, which you can get at one place. There are different pieces of information and in this paper, we just try to connect all these available information in the public domain. And based on that, we propose that mesenchymal stem cell or the maintenance stem cell, we divided these three responses as a proposed mechanism of mesenchymal stem cell. So what happened actually in our human body, there is a pro environment, which is a healing environment and there is an anti-environment which is a catabolic environment. So in pro-environment, the inflammation is less 
anti-apoptotic, which is a programmed cell death is less, less fibrosis and it's angiogenic. But in the anti-environment and the catabolic environment, all four of these are there. So there is more programmed cell death, more inflammation, and inflammation heals with the fibrosis. It does not form the good tissue. And there is a less angiogenesis, new vessel formations. And in an anti-environment, the local resident stem cell are weak. So basically in our human body, there are some local resident stem cell. As we know that after every few weeks, the skin layers, the epidermis, and the intestinal lining or our urogenital areas, they undergo renewal. How this is happening? This is happening because of these local resident stem cells, which are maintaining and maintaining a healthy environment and preventing inflammation. That's why there should be maintenance stem cells. Now, when a stem cell is injected in the human body, there's a lot of controversy, how it works. Some say that it goes there and it replicates. Some say that no, it's just by perocrine and juxtacrine, but the accepted is that the universal standing is that it worked by juxtacrine and paracrine. Now we have simplified this mechanism of the stem cell. And the first part is called force induction response, which means when a stem cell is injected in the human body, majority of these cells disappear. Like if you inject into the knee joint or any other area, majority of them, they disappear, or we can say that they die. But before they die, they are able to do their work. How? They release certain growth factors, which promote healing, cytokines, which modulate immunity and reduce inflammations, and also by exosomes, which are the source of signal energy. And only a small percentage of these injected stem cell, they remain or they survive. There are a few studies in which they tag the injected stem cell, and they were able to show that actually some of those cells get incorporated into the host tissue or in the host cartilage. It has been shown, but in not in all the studies, only few, or I can say only hardly one or two. So once the stem cells have been injected and majority of them, they have died and they have released the growth factors, these growth factors, then they induce the local resident stem cells. So what they do, they supply extracellular vesicles, which is actually a source of energy, signal, and a local support. So what happens once the local resident stem cells in the anti-environment, they are weak they are not able to perform well. They are not able to divide so well and the healing capacity is limited. But once they get a signal from these implanted stem cell and they get a support in the form of growth factors and healing environment and less inflammation, they become active. And they start following these injected stem cells. They also start dividing and they also promote healing. So in the third stage in the FIR, it helps recruitment means there is the number of cells from local resident stem cell and those who are implanted, they increase and they promote healings. Now this healing response in the second phase continue, this is called SIR, which means sustained indexing response which means during this phase, both local resident and some of the surviving stem cell, they are continuously reducing inflammation, promoting healing, giving more energy and more signals to the local resident stem cell. But after some time, this 
supply of the energy and signal become less and these implanted stem cells are starting dying because they cannot multiply after a certain time and then this limited induction response start which again progress towards the anti environment so basically when you inject a stem cell first it start a healing response it goes there release growth factors majority of them die those growth factors they induce the local cells localizing the stem cell they also become active and they continue this response and then this response fade or it start waning now if you want to continue this you need to repeat this injection again so this is the basic idea how the stem cell work they are working through the growth factors paracrine and juxtacrine which are locally stimulating the local resident stem cell all of them they don't incorporate into the host tissue only minority of them incorporate so basically the stem cell goes uh, immunomodulation and growth factors now how they are actually in osteoarthritis so in osteoarthritis they are inhibiting the inflammatory cytokines so the main action for inflammation is promoted basically they produce this is called alpha tumor necrotic factor stimulated genes protein tsg6 and prostaglandin e2 what they do they allow conversion of m1 macrophages to the m2 and m2 is basically more immunosuppressive they also act on the macrophages and prevent the production of inflammatory mediator like nitric oxide in alpha tumor necrotic factor and interleukin 1 they also act on the mast cells so they are acting in all these cells they are acting on macrophages mast cells and natural killer cells their immunosuppressive effect is again mediated by interleukin 10 and beta transforming growth factors which prevent the main inflammatory markers interleukin 1 and alpha tumor necrotic factors they also prevent the gamma interferon stimulated t cells they also inhibit the natural killer cells and they inhibit b cells so they are acting on active immunity also so in osteoarthritis they promote pro in pro <laughs> pro environment or anti inflammatory environment and immunosuppressive environment and which provide healing for the whatever the pathology is there now let's talk about the efficacy now if you see the literature you will come across about the stem cell i think this is a good idea that if somebody is listening about a word like stem cells or reading something they should have an idea that what actually is the regenerative treatment product because many time there are a lot of we can say the confusion or misuse of the term so regenerative treatment basically it could be blood based or cell based so when we talk about the cell based cell based means either it is like a stem cell which means when we are saying stem cell we need to know whether it is a culture expanded stem cell source may be anywhere or it is a non cultured stem cell when we say cultured stem cell we are giving a definite number of stem cells counted in the lab and supplied to the clinician for application when we say non cultured stem cell then they may be from different sources and the most common source is the bone marrow so from the bone marrow when we take bone marrow concentrate it also has a stem cell but the number of stem cell is less just around 50000 to 100000 in 100 ml of the bone marrow if you take a fat and you just mechanically break down which is called micro fragmented fat it has lot of stem cell in comparison to the bone marrow so it's like 500 times more stem cell are there in the fat in comparison to the bone marrow but they are non culture then there is another product called stromal vascular fraction which will be discussed by subsequent speaker they they also have the stem cell so 
if we are talking about the stem cell, we need to know what actually, whether it is culture expanded or it is one of a product. Now, if we want to know whether the stem cell actually work, yes, the stem cell work. There's the reason that your intestine lining and your skin is undergoing constant renewal. But do they work in the same way when you implant or inject at the effective side? No, it's a little bit different. So if we talk about the efficacy, the literature is conflicting and debatable. Because most of the study, they say, when you give a stem cell for osteoarthritis or tendinopathy or other pathology, they improve the clinical symptom. Like in orthopedic, they improve the pain, swelling, range of motion. And these signs and symptoms are measured by certain scores, like WOMAC score or the pain score. And it has been shown that there is an improvement in these scores. And usually it lasts for six to 12 months. But in some study, it has been shown that it can last even up to two to three years or even four years. But generally after one year, the effect starts showing a downward trend and it needs another injection. How much stem cell should be injected? If you see the literature, the literature gives a variable dose range from five to 50 millions up to 1 billion cell. Some studies they have divided like a low dose, moderate dose and high dose. Low dose they usually give like 2 to 5 million cells and then 5 to 15 is the moderate and billion cell like 50 millions or 1 billion is high dose. And uh, many of them they have shown that even the low dose are as beneficial as the high dose. But the effect last longer when you give a high dose. So usually the, the recommended dose is like five to 50. Some studies show even two million cell is as good as like 10 or 20 million cell. But in clinical practice, usually we give 20 million cells per joint. I use 20 million cell per joint. Root of administration for osteoarthritis, we give inside the joint under ultrasound intraarticular, but in some patients we also inject intraosseous like subchondral area under fluoroscopy. Now what is the impact? Does the radiological improvement is there? Well it is also again debatable. Majority of the studies show that there is no improvement in the x-ray. The joint space might look the same the angle between femur and tibia may be the same, but in some study it show that it shows slight improvement in the joint space. But for that, you need to have exactly the same kind of views before injection and after injection. Same is up for the MRI. Now, some study shows that there is improvement in the MRI, that the edema inside the bone, that become less the density of the cartilage on the MRI looks better. And some even has shown that the cartilage thickness also improved. But usually these changes take long time, around one to two years. And these uh, results are more better when you augment the surgery with the stem cell. Are stem cells safe? Yes, they are safe, but you need to use a right kind of stem cell. As far as the adult stem cell are concerned, the literature and the clinical practice, they have been shown as safe for osteoarthritis and on other issues. In osteoarthritis, the most common issue is the pain and swelling, which is seen around 50 to 60% of the patient. Although there are some serious complications have been reported in the literature, like angina or pulmonary embolism, but they are not directly related to the mesenchymal stem cell treatment. The another important point is when you are injecting intraosseous like subchondral bone, then you have to be a little bit slow because sometimes it might increase the intraosseous pressure. Now, if you use a standard, safe and aseptic technique for harvesting 
and you inject at the right place in the right dose under ultrasound or even without ultrasound, it works. And it will minimize the risk of complication like pain, swelling, infections. Now, the main opposition for the stem cell by the big pharma giant is that they cause cancer. But the adult stem cell, theoretically, there may be a risk. But until now, adult stem cell has not documented any cancer formation. And uh, many studies even have rejected that there is any risk for the claim. But if you are using embryonic stem cells, which are, which are pluripotent cells, which can form all different kinds of tissue, yes, there is a risk of cancer formation. Now, what the future perspective? Now, if we see the, the research and the clinical studies, every, we are trying to know that which is the best source of the stem cell, whether it is the fat or it is the bone marrow. Although those we use bone marrow, they say number may be less, but the quality is better. Colony forming unit is better. Those we use fat, they say the number are more. Replication is better. So it's, we need, it need a lot of more randomized control study to decide which is the best and how, what is the right kind of dose, the optimum dose. Because if you are giving higher doses, then maybe the effect is long lasting and better than the lower dose. But we need to know what is that the higher dose or what is the maximum dose. Because the study shows that even 2 million cells is as good as 10 million or 1 billion. But the effect is the long lasting. Then another uh, area of uh, interest is how can we deliver stem cell in a targeted manner? like we use a scaffold with uh, supplemented with the growth factor or with the nanoparticle so that we can introduce or administer the cell in the right dose. So the main aim of this talk is that regenerative medicine is a upcoming branch and it's evolving, it's helping the patient, it has helped the patients and uh, it cannot be a alternative to the total joint replacement. If a patient has grade three, grade four, deformed joint, stiff joint, stem cells are not gonna work for that patient. It is then he need total knee. But if somebody has a stage two, stage three, movement are fairly not very limited, fissures not working, then stem cell do work. You can inject intra-articular with or without ultrasound. And if the pathology is more, intraosseous also. If the patient is, doesn't want surgery and they just want pain relief, yes, you can combine. And even we combine the stem cell with the PRP and uh, uh, both PRP and the stem cell. Then stem cell, we should have a right candidate. It should be administered by a person who has been properly trained with aseptic technique of harvesting. If you're using culture expanded, it should be a reliable lab. Patients should be told or taken a informed consent should be taken from the patient explaining all the risk, including the theoretical risk of cancer formation, although there's no evidence for it, all the possible complication. And the patient should be given a fair, like a expectation should not be raised. They should not be told that there is a magic band and your cartilage is gonna grow back normal as you were having 20 years before or before the injury. They should be given that it will relieve the pain, relieve the symptom, improve the quality of the life, might stabilize your cartilage. So stay safe, stay home. This is a COVID time and follow the guidelines. If you have any question and query, this is my email, drsoak, reasonexpert at gmail.com. You can contact me. And we also have this YouTube channel through this. We are trying to give uh, evidence-based information by sharing experience and knowledge by 
specialists from different part of the world and we will be conducting more webinars more information interviews and uh, i'm happy to uh, reply if you have any query or any question thank you